Hello there. Well, in a previous video, I showed you how to find the uh, trig identities of any angle by using an appropriately placed right triangle in the quadrant that's uh, given in the problem. I'd like to show you a different way now of finding the functions of any angle by using the fundamental trigonometric identities. Uh, and if you need a review of those, there is a video called the Fundamental Trigonometric Identities that you might want to review before taking a look at this if you don't remember them. But anyway, I'm going to use the exact same two problems that I did um, using the right triangles on that finding the trigonometric identities of any angle video. So we're going to use those exact same two problems. The first problem was this one. The sine of the angle equals negative 5 thirteenths and we said that we're in quadrant 3. Okay, so using our trig identities, the first one, the very the easiest one, is to know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. That's one of our reciprocal identities. So when we take the reciprocal of negative 5 thirteenths, we get negative 13 fifths. That one's pretty quick and easy, isn't it? Okay, now let's talk about some of the other ones we could find. There's a couple of different ways of going about this, and they're all equally correct. I'm going to go ahead and find cosine next, because the other, another very, very basic identity is this one. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Well, I know what sine is. Sine is negative 5 thirteenths, so we're going to square that. Plus cosine squared theta equals 1. When I square negative 25, when I square negative 5 thirteenths, I get 25 over 169. That's what I get. Plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So cosine squared theta equals 1 minus 25 over 169. I can rewrite 1 as 169 over 169 minus 25 over 169. Whoops. Gives me 144 over 169. So if I square root both sides, I get the cosine of theta equals plus or minus the square root of 144 over 169. We know that the square root of 144 is 12. We know the square root of 169 is 13. So the only question we have now is, is it plus or is it minus? There are two options when we take the square root. You can either have the positive square root or the negative square root. Do we have an indication of which one we want here? Sure we do, because we're in quadrant 3. And if we're in quadrant 3, this one right here, all of my cosines, all of my x values are negative, as well as my sine values. So my cosine is going to be negative 12 thirteenths. So, so far I've got two of them. Actually, I've got three of them if you count the original sine. Okay, secant should be pretty straightforward now. Secant is the reciprocal of 1 over cosine. So that's going to be negative 13 twelfths. So far, so good. So my last two are tan and cotan. Now, a couple different ways to do this. I could use one of my other Pythagorean identities, or I could just simply use the quotient identity, the tan of theta equals sine over cosine. I think that's probably easier than using the Pythagorean identity. So anyway, we've got sine, which is negative 5 thirteenths over my cosine, which was negative 12 thirteenths. Okay, I think you hopefully, hopefully you'll notice right away that my two negatives are going to cancel each other. So I have 5 thirteenths divided by 12 thirteenths, which is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I get the tan of my angle is 5 twelfth. This is the tan of theta. That's the tan, and it shouldn't be any great leap to determine that the cotan, which is the reciprocal of tangent, is 12 fifths. So there was problem one. All the same answers. 
we didn't use a um, right triangle this time. We just used, a, used the Pythagorean identities instead. Okay, now the second problem. I'll remind you what the second problem was. The second problem was the cosecant of the angle equals 4 and the tan of theta, whoops, the tan, let me get rid of that, and the tan of theta is negative, was less than zero. And we determined that meant that we were in quadrant two because that's the only place where cosecant or sine is positive and tan is negative. Okay, so we've got our first one. What about our second one? Our second one, we could use our reciprocal identity. The sine of theta equals one over cosecant theta, so my sine is one-fourth. So far, so good. Sine is positive in quadrant two. Okay, now we've got a bunch of different things we can do here. Um, let's go ahead, let's do the same thing we did in the earlier problem. Let's go ahead and find uh, cosine next, since we know what sine is. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. If I square sine theta, which is right here, I get 1 16th, don't I? Sure do. Plus, that should be a plus sign. Cosine squared theta equals 1. If I subtract 1 16th from both sides, I get cosine squared theta equals 16 16ths minus 1 16th is 15 16ths, isn't it? I square root both sides. Get rid of that square because I'm square rooting. I square root both sides and I get the cosine of theta equals plus or minus the square root of 15 over the square root of 16, which is 4, right? So I only need to determine now again which of the two roots am I talking about? Is it the positive or is it the negative? And again, we know we're in quadrant 2 this quadrant right here, which says that my cosine is negative. So my cosine is negative 15 over 4. It's negative square root of 15 over 4, excuse me. And then I guess we can do just what we did last time. Our secant is going to be the reciprocal of that, which is negative 4 over radical 15. Again, I'll leave it to you to figure out the rationalization here. It's negative 4 radical 15 over 15. And then I can do my tan and cotan by doing my quotient identities again. I know that tan of theta equals sine over cosine. My sine was 1 fourth. My cosine was negative radical 15 over 4. So that's going to give me a negative answer because I'm dividing a positive by a negative. And I'm going to do one-fourth times the reciprocal of the denominator because I'm dividing by a fraction, which is 4 over radical 15. I hope you can see the 4's cancel. And we get negative 1 over radical 15. Let's rationalize that. You get negative radical 15 over 15. So that is our tan of theta. And my cotan of theta is going to be the reciprocal of tan. And if we look back here, this is probably an easier one to work with. Our tangent was negative 1 over radical 15. So if we take the reciprocal, we get negative radical 15 over 1. So as you can see, there's another way to solve these problems that doesn't involve using right triangles. I happen to think using right triangles is a little easier, personally. Um, but you could do either one of these ways. Thanks.